<coughs> oh. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be hosting today. Uh, all right, hold on. Much better. Today we're gonna show you how to transform like Loki. We've done the Loki transformation tutorial years ago. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Some people have been saying that it's too hard for beginners to follow. So today I wanted to simplify it down and make a beginner tutorial and try to cover every single step along the way. When you shoot your footage, it's gonna be really helpful to have your camera locked off and not moving at all. Make sure your batteries are fully charged so you don't have to swap them mid shoot like we did and make sure your camera is very stable. Indoor lighting is gonna be consistent, which is very important. If you're doing a costume change, outdoor lighting may change too much. You can still get it to work, but it's gonna take a few more steps. Go ahead and watch our old tutorial to reference that issue if it comes up for you. It's also gonna be very helpful to have your actor or whoever is doing the transformation effect stand in the same spot. Having some type of marker on the ground is gonna make this a lot easier. The closer you get to your original position, the better, but you do have a little bit of wiggle room for inaccuracy. All right, I would suggest using a green screen for this effect, but I'll show you how to do it without one. We need three different shots to make this effect happen. The first shot is of your actor in the original costume, or if you're doing a character transformation, it's gonna be your first character. The second shot is gonna be the costume change or the second character. And the third shot is a clean plate, which is just a background without any actor. Make sure to record at least 15 seconds or so of of a clean plate. I like to shoot multiple takes of everything so I can pick and choose what I like the most. You can edit this in Premiere first if you wanna do that, which I like to do if I'm working with clips that have audio. If your character has some movement, you can take your original costume clip, place that above the clip that you're transitioning to, and then you can drop the opacity of the top clip to match up the timing. Once you have your edit all figured out, select your sequence, including the clean plate, right click and select replace with After Effects effects composition. After Effects should just launch from there. If it doesn't, you may want to just do the edit in After Effects to begin with instead of Premiere. It's always helpful to name your layers, so I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna knock out the rotoscoping first. Let's just take care of that. So I'm gonna figure out where I want my transformation effect to start and where I want it to stop. Usually right around one second or so seems to work well for this effect. Go ahead and create a copy of each of your character clips. You can do this by selecting them and hitting Control or Command D renaming them to stay as organized as possible. Go ahead and trim your roto comps down so they are just as long as the transition. That way you don't have to roto unnecessary frames. Pre-compose both of those roto layers together and jump into that pre-comp. Select your first layer and the roto brush tool, which looks like this tiny dude with a big paintbrush or maybe a big paintbrush and a normal sized dude. Double click on your first layer, hold control and drag it to change your roto brush size and just do a quick outline don't be too exact with it Rotobrush actually prefers you to be somewhat loose. Rotobrush isn't gonna be able to pull off this hair and that's okay, we're just gonna fix that later. Increase the feathering and the shift edge. Play it through and if the purple line looks good to you, hit the freeze button. If you shot on a green screen, you could do a key here instead. And if Rotobrush isn't working for you, there are tons of other rotoscoping tutorials on YouTube that you can check out. Okay, I'm gonna follow the exact same rotoscoping steps for the second clip. There are some gaps in the arm here that I want to be rotoscoped so I can just resize my brush and hold alt to paint them out. Now it's not the best roto, but honestly that's okay. With this effect, it's not gonna be noticeable. Let's jump back into our composition window and we are on to the fun stuff. Hit control Y to create a new white solid, trim it so it's the length of your rotoscope layers and pre-comp it with all attributes into the new composition. We're gonna label this one a transition. Draw a large rectangle mask around your layer. Have your playhead at the end of the layer where the transition is gonna end and set a mask path keyframe. Then jump to the start of the layer and move that mask up. Create a new black solid and just drag that under your white solid. Add a turbulent displace effect to your white solid. Adjust the amount and size. Now you can always go back and change this later if you want. I like to have two displacement effects, one for large, smoother waves, and then a second for smaller, more detailed, kind of crunchy waves. 
Back in your Roto Layers comp, turn off the visibility of your transition layer. Select the shot of your first costume and add a set matte effect. Switch the Use for Matte to Luminance and the Take Matte from Layer to the Transitions layer. Then select Invert Matte. Copy that set matte effect and paste it to your second costume shot and uncheck Invert Matte. Now you can see our transformation effect is starting to take shape. Jump back into your main cop and trim your starting clip and ending clip to the start and end transition period. Then drag your clean plate layer underneath your rotoscope layers. Now go to your roto layers composition and copy your transition layer. Paste it into your main composition and drag it to the top of the stack. Go ahead and turn on the visibility on this layer. Add the set matte effect to that and then for take matte from select roto layers the transition layer is black and white we want to get a green line created where they meet this is actually pretty easy to do just add a fast box blur to your transition layer set it to a blur radius of something around five again we can always change this later if we want the line to be thicker or thinner now drag that underneath your set matte effect you'll notice this weird line here the easiest way to get rid of that is by adding a levels effect and then then toggling down the RGB and changing that to alpha. Drag this arrow on the right towards the left until the line is gone. So before we transitioned from white to black on this layer, now with the blur effect, we're actually transitioning from white to gray to black. Now the gray part is what we can use to create our green squiggly line. We're gonna add a tritone effect and change the white highlights to black. You can change the midtones from brown to green. Change the blending mode of your transition layer. If you don't see the blend modes, hit the toggle switches tab at the bottom right here. Try different options to see what works best for you. I think screen or lighten or add all work pretty well for this effect. And that is the basics of this effect. Okay, now I'm gonna go into ways that you can stylize it and really make it pop. This is all to taste. There are no right or wrong ways. The transformations that happen in the movies and the show are all really cool, but they are pretty inconsistent. So really do whatever is best for you and stop whenever you have something you are happy with. The first thing I want to do is add a little light casting to this. This will add some depth to the effect. Jump into your Roto Layers composition. I'm going to put the B clip on top of the A clip in the layer stack. Next, create a duplicate of your transitions layers. Turn on the visibility and drop it between your B and A clips. Add a set matte effect to your new transition clip and set your take matte from to A clip and your source to effects and masks. Now add a fast box blur to that layer and crank it up. Drag it above your set matte effect. Now add a tint effect and change that white to a green and change your blending mode. I'm gonna go with add this time, but drop the opacity of the layer down. Now we have some nice light cast. If you wanna break the light up a little bit so it doesn't look so flat, jump back to the transitions layer and add a displacement map effect. Change the displacement map layer to the B clip and increase the horizontal and vertical displacement. Then drag it to be right before the set mat effect. Increase the displacement as much as you want and you can see how this is making the lighting look more interactive with the footage and way less flat. The next thing I want to do is add some light rays to our wiggly line. Back in your main comp, duplicate your transitions layer. I'm going to call this light rays and instead of adding a light rays effect, I'm going to add a light burst effect. I like to have two or three copies of these layers, each with decreasing intensity and increasing ray length. I think I'll switch these all to a screen transfer mode. Always mess with the blending mode settings until you find what looks best for you. I'm going to create another instance of the light rays composition and change the color of the mid tritone to red to give it kind of like a prismatic chromatic aberration look. This is actually working really well for me. I'm just going to mess around with the colors and parameters a little bit of everything to just tweak it here and there and close in on that final look. Next, let's just add a little atmospheric glow. This is really easy to do. Create a new green solid with a circular mask and feather it out a lot. Set the blend mode to lighten and drop the opacity way down and just keyframe the mask to move with the transition and keyframe the opacity from zero up until it looks good and then back down to zero. Let's trim the roto layers comp to only happen during the transition. It's causing some weird dark stuff to happen. I think I want my transition to happen just a little bit faster and 
luckily this is very easy to do with our current setup. Jump to your transitions pre-comp and move your white solid masks second keyframe just to the left a little bit. Remember, you can always change your displacement maps here as well and they're gonna update throughout the entire project. Now this transition feels a little too two-dimensional to me and I wanna add a little distortion to make it look like it's actually moving over Nico's body. I'm just gonna copy this A clip here and it really doesn't matter if it's A or B, this is just a reference clip and I'm gonna paste that into my transitions comp and drop the opacity to 50%. Now I can right click on it and select guide layer. And all this means is that I can see this layer in the comp, but it's not gonna appear in the other comps or the render themselves. It is just a guide layer. I'll add a bulge effect to the white solid and place it on Nico's head to give it a little bit more of a 3D look. I'm gonna play around with the radius and height. Next, I think I'll try some mesh warp and see if I can add a little more movement around the body. Now, there is no real science to this. I'm just adjusting it to the lines of the body. Maybe it slows around the shoulders and speeds up towards the center. Now, overall, this is pretty subtle, but I think it does add a little bit of that something that I'm looking for. And that's how you can make the low key transformation effect. If you think you're ready for a more difficult tutorial, I'm gonna link that previous tutorial in the description. I'm also gonna link all the sound effects that we use down below. Finding the right sound for your transformation is essential to making it feel authentic, and we have made some just for you. Make it awesome.